Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the class. This is David A. Cox with PCClassesOnline.com. Today, here it is a beautiful day in sunny Key West, Florida, and uh, today we're going to be talking about Windows XP. You know, I thought this would be a good class to offer. We've already done classes on, of course, the Mac, all the different operating systems for that, Windows uh, 7, Windows 8, but we never really tackled XP. Um, and I think most of you know at this point I won't even teach Vista because it's unteachable. So uh, we're going to be going over all the basics today. Everything you would need to know if you are getting a computer for the first time and if for whatever reason it's running an older operating system like Windows XP, I'm going to go over everything. So we're going to talk about using the start menu as well as my computer, how to access your documents, where things go when you download them. Also things like how to uninstall programs, uh, create aliases so you can have shortcuts to them on your main desktop. Uh, creating folders, bookmarks, the whole nine yards. So let's get started here. So this is the main screen you see when you boot up. This is called the desktop. Uh, this background image here is called wallpaper. Now this is just one of the basic ones that comes with the computer. Uh, you can use any of your photos if you want um, and I can show you that if you like at the very end. Um, and basically all of your stuff is located between one of two locations. The first is called My Computer, which you'll see up here on my desktop. Now, you may or may not see it say My Computer here. There's another place where it can live, depending on how your computer is configured. The second location is the Start Menu, which is down here at the bottom left. And the Start Menu has been with Windows since almost the beginning, uh, and they got rid of it in Windows 8. So if uh, you do not see My Computer on your desktop, this is where you will see it. It's actually in the Start Menu. Okay, And inside the Start Menu is where you go to access pretty much everything you can imagine. So for example, if you look here where it says All Programs, this is where all, oops, sorry, that is where all the different applications in the computer are located. Okay, now it doesn't come with very many, but of course you can download extra ones. You can buy extra uh, applications like Microsoft Office, which I just finished doing a class on. Um, it comes, of course, with Internet Explorer as the main web browser. I personally recommend that you check out Google Chrome over Internet Explorer. Uh, you can get Google Chrome just by going to Google and just type in the word Chrome. It'll pop right up. It's a very small file. It's very easy to use. And what I like about it is that if you do have favorite websites that you decide to bookmark, let's say you start to use another computer, it will have those changes automatically synced between the two different machines. So that's a little bit about that. Um, one of the things I wanted to do during this class is answer just a lot of questions that people have when they first experience Windows XP. Now one of the things you may have noticed about mine, and you may not have the same thing, all of my different applications here are in alphabetical order, at least the ones up here. A lot of people don't know how to do that. A lot of the different commands in Windows you enable by right-clicking on your mouse. So your mouse theoretically has a left click and a right click. When you click on the right-hand side, you can see right there, sort by name. Just a good thing to know how to do. Okay. Uh, what else do we have here? I have my little cheat sheet here, which I'm just going to look at. Um, the other location that I want to make you aware of, and this is technically inside of my computer, but you have this folder called My Documents. And My Documents actually contains four folders. Downloads, Music, Pictures, and Videos. Now the big one to know in this is Downloads, because anytime you go to the web and you download something, whether it's a PDF or a song, something like that, by default this is where it all goes. Okay inside that folder. You can see I have our little uh, instant help support software here. So that's a good one I want to go over because a lot of people seem to get confused by that. My music here is just a place where you can store your music. Um, if you decide to download an application like, uh, like iTunes, that's where it will store it. Uh, actually inside of My Music I believe it will create a folder called iTunes Library. My Pictures is the default location where you can save digital photos. Okay, It has some sample pictures here. Most people just delete this folder, but uh, you can choose to keep it if you want. And then a place for your videos if you decide to download any videos there. But uh, My Documents is a place that you're going to be visiting quite a bit. The other place I want to just mention briefly 
is also inside my computer and it's called the C drive. Now the C drive is the default name of kind of where all of everything is. Okay, so it's where all the program files are, it's where all the Windows files are, um, and for the most part you probably want to leave this alone. Just because if you go and start downloading files and you don't, you, sorry, you start deleting files and you don't know what they are, it could definitely cause a problem. I remember when I did that once when I was a kid and the result was not so much fun. Um, another place I want to show you, when you want to tweak the settings on your computer, there is something called the control panel and it's right here underneath my computer. Now, control panel gives you access to a whole bunch of different features and I'm going to go through a lot of them right now. Appearance and themes right here uh, is where you can go to change kind of the overall look of the computer. Uh, you can change, um, it's called the theme. If you go in here, you can see here I have one called, I'm in one called XP Modified. Okay. Uh, the desktop background. All right. So this is where if you don't like the one that comes with your computer, I believe, let's see if I can find that image there. If you can see that is the default image with Windows XP. But you can also put in your own photos. And to do that, what you would have to do is click here where it says Browse and just point it to wherever you have your digital photo saved. So if you have a photo of your kids, you can have that be your desktop background. Let's go back. Uh, screensaver. Now, screensavers aren't so much necessary anymore now that we really don't have CRT monitors that can burn an image into the screen. Now we have things like LED and LCD screens, excuse the background noise, and uh, that's not really an issue. But it will save a little bit of power, so if you want, you can enable a screensaver. Um, probably more than anything, you know, you might want to go here under the, the uh, energy saver settings and that way the computer will just uh, turn the monitor off after a certain period of time. But as you can see here, you can choose different screensavers that give you, you know, round 12 or so. And uh, when you find one that you want, all you have to do is click apply and uh, make sure you check out where it says how long before you want it to start up. Okay. Changing the screen resolution. So what screen resolution does is it will make the higher the resolution, the smaller everything will appear, but it will also be clearer. So I have it down pretty low right now because that way everything's nice and large so that all of you can see what's on my screen without me having to zoom in on every single thing that I click on. So that's kind of what you want to know about that. If I actually did use Windows XP as my computer, I would probably have it right towards the end here because I like personally, I like it to look really nice and crisp. I also have pretty good vision so that that's uh, not so much, I don't need everything to be huge for me. Other things you can do here in the control panel is you can configure your network and internet settings. Okay. So if you uh, have a wireless network, you can set it up right through here. Frankly, a lot of the uh, different routers out there, you would not go to use this. Usually you just um, go to a website that's written on the uh, back of the router, and that's how you set up the wireless network. You can also go in here, this is an important one, to change the firewall settings. Uh, firewall will um, basically just add to the security, so you don't have to worry so much about hackers, that kind of thing. So it's a good idea to keep a firewall turned on. Uh, other things we have here, this is a really big important one. Some people when they go to remove a program from uh, Windows, they just try to drag it to the trash and you really can't do that because there are other files that are there but not necessarily in that folder that you need to remove. So by clicking on where it says add or remove programs, you can go through here and let's say for whatever reason I'm not going to do it, uh, let's say I want to remove Google Chrome. I would click remove and it's going to get all the different files. It's a very clean way to uninstall any applications. Next here we have sound, speech, and audio devices. I don't think we really need to go over that, but you can adjust the system volume. Uh, the easiest way to control the volume, uh, depending on what kind of a computer you have, some people have a button on their keyboard that would look like a little speaker icon. You can just hit that. You can also look here at the bottom right hand corner of my screen and where it says volume and just click on that and you can drag this little bar up or down as much as you need. 
Uh, let's see, performance and maintenance. Uh, you can go in here and you can kind of adjust some of the different settings here. Not really that important. For backing up your data, um, I personally wouldn't probably use this right here. There's another service that I recommend for Windows, uh, Windows users, which we can go over at the very end. Uh, printers and other hardware. So if you need to add something like a printer um, or a joystick, I guess, or a gaming controller, you can go right through here and add that. Now, unfortunately, uh, with the way that Windows works, a lot of times you're going to end up needing the disk that comes with your printer or you can alternatively just go to the manufacturer's website. So let's say you have a new HP printer. What you would do is you would go to HP's website and be looking for drivers. That's what it's called. Drivers, a little piece of terminology. A driver is like the uh, it's like the mailman between the, the printer and your computer. Okay, it's the communication method. But every once in a while you get lucky and you won't need it. Okay. Next we have user accounts. And where user accounts is great is let's say uh, let's pretend you're a husband and wife. Okay, the husband has certain things that he does, the wife has things that she does. By creating two different user accounts, you can have your own separate space. Okay, um, and this is where you would go to access that. Date, time, language, and regional options. I don't think we really need to go over any of that. Uh, most of you won't need to. Accessibility options. If you are uh, hearing impaired, visually impaired, you can go in here and check out some of the different options. And security center. Um, now, if you need, if you're looking to get uh, the best antivirus software out there, I'm just going to throw this out there. Typically speaking, there are two different applications that I recommend to most of my clients who are uh, still using PCs. And the two uh, pieces of software are Microsoft Security Essentials, which is free. And you can get that just by going to the web and just searching for Microsoft Security Essentials. It's right here and you literally just click download and it walks you through the rest. The other one that you might want to consider getting is a piece of software called Malware Bytes and that's spelled M-A-L-W-A-R-E-B-Y-T-E-S and uh, malware includes things like Trojans and worms and all these different things that are meant to harm your computer and Malware Bytes is I believe $25. It's very um, it's very good at what it does. I have uh, it saved me when I've had to work with clients who get viruses. I just throw on malware bytes and boom, it goes after it and gets it. No software, no antivirus software is perfect. That's something to be clear. There is no such thing as a perfect piece of antivirus software. What I can tell you is that there are some that are better than others. And I would put these two ab far above Norton and far above McAfee. So just keep that in mind if you're going to get antivirus software. Uh, let's see, did we go over everything in the control plan? I believe we did. Uh, next thing, I just showed you how to uninstall programs. Uh, whenever you're working with a file and you don't need it anymore, what you can do is you can uh, tap on the delete key on your keyboard or you can drag it right here to what's called the recycle bin. Now you'll uh, start to acquire a lot of stuff here in your recycle bin over time. Whenever you want to empty it, all you have to do is right click on it and you'll see here that the third option is empty recycle bin. And that's it. Uh, let's see, next on my list, um, big important one to know about. So sometimes you're on your PC and something just freezes, it crashes. Um, back when I used to use a PC uh, as my primary computer, it would happen all the time. Um, part of the reason why I did end up switching. And uh, one of the good things to know is how to force quit the application. Okay, The way you do it is on your keyboard, you're going to have to hit three keys at once. You're going to have to hit Control, Alt, and the Delete key all at the same time. And that's going to bring up this window right here, which is called the Task Manager. So what it's going to do is it's going to show you what's going on in the background. Now, I don't have anything running right now. Let me just put in Google Chrome so that that shows up. So now you can see here that Google Chrome is running and under status it says running. Uh, if it was having problems, it would say uh, not responding. So the way that you can force quit out of these is you simply click on it so that it is highlighted and hit end task. 
I apologize for the beeping if you can hear it in the background. It's a stupid truck outside. Unfortunately, they seem to prefer to do this at the most inconvenient time. Here under processes is all the different little files that you don't see that are all running in the background. Sometimes if you have a virus, you can find it running in this list here. Okay, performance will just show you the CPU usage, okay, and the how much available memory there is, yada yada, network activity, and you'll see there's only one active user right now. Again, that is Control, Alt, and the Delete key all at the same time to get there. Now, you can see here that on my desktop, I have uh, a quick access to Google Chrome as well as Internet Explorer, which I actually don't use. Um, the way you get any of these is you would go into the Start menu, go to the program. And let's just find another one that we can add. Let's go under Games, and let's say I like to play. Let's say I like to play Solitaire. The way you can add a shortcut is simply right-click, and you'll get a series of additional options. Now, from here, you're going to go to Send to, and just move your cursor over here, and where you see it says Desktop, it says Create Shortcut. And when I click on that, you can see now I have a shortcut for solitaire. FYI, if you ever see that little arrow icon right there, what that means is that that is just simply a shortcut. If I send Internet Explorer right now to the trash, it's not actually deleting it. It's just deleting the shortcut, okay? And typically, most programs that you see on your desktop are shortcuts. To keep your system running well, one of the things you're going to want to do is to run the different Windows updates. And to do that, you're going to click on the Start menu, go here under All Programs, oops, sorry about that, and from here, you're going to see right here at the very top, it says Microsoft Update. And uh, if you haven't run it in a long time, it may take a while, but it's just going to look for all the different updates that are available and allow you to download them. Um, and it'll have some that it will recommend that are high priority, usually have to do with security. And then you'll have others that are not really that important. If you don't do it, it's not the end of the world. Another question I get in a lot from people is they just want to know how to create a new folder. Let's say I'm in uh, the Documents folder and I want to create a folder for taxes. The way you do it is you simply right-click in a blank space. So if I put my cursor right here and I right-click, you'll see here that I have a whole bunch of different options. One of them is New and the very first one here is new folder. You can see here some of the other things that you can create. Now this is based on the software that I have running right now. Um, a new text document that's just a notepad, uh, access database, yada yada yada. So I'll click on new folder and anytime you see text like this where it's highlighted it means that you can type right over it. So I can type in taxes 2013, hit enter on the keyboard and it locks it in. So now if I already have documents, I can just click on them, drag them, and drop them right into where it says Taxes 2013. Let's see. Uh, another thing I want to go over, um, as I said, if you're you know going to be using a Windows XP, I recommend personally Google Chrome over Internet Explorer. What I'm going to show you is basically very, very similar in uh, Internet Explorer if you choose to use that. But what I want to do is show you how to create a list of favorites. So uh, you're using the web, and let's say that I go to CNN.com all the time. Well, there's a couple things I want to show you how to do. I want to show you how to create a home page for this, but I also want to show you how to create a bookmark. A bookmark is just a really easy way to get back here when you need it. So what we're going to do, in the case of Google Chrome, you know what, I'll show you how to do this also in Internet Explorer. There's still enough people who use it that it's important. You click up here on this icon, it looks like three bars. And from here, you can see where it says bookmarks. Now, right now, you cannot see my bookmark bar, so I'm going to show it. So you see a little space just uh, is right there now. And now when I go back there, I can say bookmark this page. Okay? Now, once again, I can type over this. If you look, this says CNN.com, but it keeps going on beyond that. Here's what I recommend. Always rename it. Just make it something really simple. In this case, I'm going to make it CNN. Otherwise, it just goes on forever. When I ask you where do you want to save it, I always save it to the bookmarks bar. In this case, hit Done, 
And you'll see now that at the top left, there's now a little shortcut for CNN. The other thing I want to show you is how to create a home page. Now, in the case of Google Chrome, uh, a lot of people just goes to the different apps that you can use built into the guts of Chrome. But if you want to go to an actual website, here's how you do it. Let's say I go to CNN enough that I want to have it load as soon as I open Chrome. The way you do that is you're going to click right here on the same icon and this time we're going to go into settings. Now here in settings, you can see here, uh, oops, here we go. On startup, you can either choose to have it continue where you left off, so it'll just load the last page you were on, or you can have it load a specific page and that's where you would just click right there. Now Google Chrome is really best if you are using also their email service because that's when it will synchronize all of your different settings across different devices. So if you have a Gmail account, this is definitely the web browser for you, in my opinion. Now let's show you how to do the exact same thing in Internet Explorer. Uh, let me go fetch it. So let's say I'm here in Google, and let's say I want, uh, well, Google is my homepage right now. Let's say I want, let's switch it up. Let's say I want, uh, uh, what do I want? Let's say I want yahoo.com to be my homepage for whatever reason. The first thing you're going to need to do is go there just by simply clicking up here where it has the internet address bar. Type it in and hit enter. From here, once you're done with that, you're going to go under tools go down to the bottom where it says internet options and if you look right here home page it's set to google.com if I click on use current it switches it to yahoo.com very easy and then click apply so now when I close this out the next time I go back excuse the chicken in the background clearly we're still in Key West you can see we're right back to where we left off <clears throat> To add the bookmarks here, in this case, what you're going to do, um, first of all, if you see a bunch of these like little uh, address bars that you don't care about, just put your cursor right in a blank space and right click. So you can see here, I don't really care about a compatibility view button. I'm going to unselect that. Uh, command bar, I don't care about that. I don't really care about the status bar so much. Okay and you can uh, go under customize if you need it to have larger icons if you have trouble seeing it. Okay, so now we're gonna go to whatever page we want. Let's say I wanna go to facebook.com. If I wanna add a favorite here, I click on where it says favorites and click add to favorites. Now here's an important part. There are two different locations for where your bookmarks can be. And by the way, the words bookmark and favorites are interchangeable, it's the same thing. So the first is the bookmark bar, which would be right up here. It's this space right here. But the other location is called the bookmark menu. And that is when you click here on favorites, it would be listed beneath these right here. So now I would click add to favorites or add to favorites bar. And you can see, excuse me, it's just added welcome to Facebook right here. Okay. Uh, let's see here. One of the things I promised I would go over with you uh, when I was speaking earlier uh, was about backing up your data. Now, there are different ways to do it. You can, of course, manually back up your data, but I like things that are a little bit more automated than that. And so here's what I'm going to recommend. There is a brand of hard drive. You can get it on Amazon.com. Let me see if I can find it here. and it's made by Western Digital. And here's the easiest way to do it. Just search for the word WD Smartware. So Smartware is a piece of software that comes pre-installed in some Western Digital hard drives. And what it will do is it will automatically back up all of your data as often as you want. Um, it's really easy to use. Um, obviously you want to make sure you get one that's formatted for Windows. There's no actual difference. It will automatically reformat it for uh, if you get one for Mac, it will reformat it for Windows, um, but it's just easier to have it come that way. Um, I'd probably go with something like this. It's a good price, it seems, um, for a, a one terabyte drive. Depends on how much stuff you have, of course. 
And that's about it. That's what I wanted to go over here. Um, if you have any other questions, now we are we are actually teaching this live right now. Um, and for those of you who are here, I can see that there are a couple questions that have come up. A lot of them I've already answered. Um, so what I'm going to do is, for those of you who are watching this as a video on our website, the video is going to cut off at this point. For those of you who are here, uh, I'll see if there's any other questions that I can answer for you before we end. And uh, let's uh, let's go to the questions, see what we can do for you.